Thank you for asking. And Citizens for, for Better Community is a nonprofit organization in the Fremont uh, area uh, for the last 27 years. So we have run our successful internship program for a long, long, long time. So when uh, Dr. Chen asked uh, to raise our hands, uh, how many organizations have run it for more than five years? So we actually have run it for uh, 27 years. I, well, probably not 27 years, but at least uh, 15, 20 years. Yeah. And, you know, I am lucky because uh, I took over a very successful um, internship program with strong relationship in the local political um, fields already. And it is, CBC's uh, program is successful because it has cultivated uh, in our local political field for a long, 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 long time, and it focuses on the local politics, because we all know that politics are all local, right? Yes. And we don't go beyond our Fremont Tri-City area. Fremont, by the way, happens to be the, uh, where the Tesla factory is located. So it has become so successful because it, uh, the numbers prove it. 100% of all of the Chinese American, uh, elected officials with the Chinese American background, they are our CBC board members or members. And at this point, four out of the seven city council members are actually CBC board members or members, one of which is uh, Yang Xiao, right? Yeah. Where's Yang Xiao? Right here, okay? So he happens to be one of the, actually the very first, first uh, immigrant from China who has been successfully elected to a Public, uh, public elect, publicly elected uh, officer, so I'm very proud of him. So he's a very good guy. And our current mayor, Lily May, has been with CBC for the last 20, 25 years, way before she was elected to the office, right? And also we are open and we are inclusive and we go beyond our original Chinese American founders to include now our Fremont's vice mayor, Raj Sawan, who is a uh, Indian American. And last year we have uh, the other uh, white um, American council member called David Warren-Corsi. So because of these um, successful elections uh, of our board members, we gain influence and power. And if that makes placement on our local um, elected officers um, jobs really easy. And the relationship from uh, years of cultivation of our board members and any uh, political um, offices, is there. it's very, very deep. So I would say focus, uh, the best practice is to focus on your local um, relationship cultivation. And once you prove that you are active in the community, you are a respected organization within the uh, your local community that represents the, uh, the Chinese votes or your 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 own uh, votes, then they are all going to pay attention to you. So, but it's also very important to be politically active, but not political, in the sense that you must not use your like an official organization's um, resources to support a political candidate. Now. You can support them in, a, in your private capacity, meaning that um, you, know, you can just uh, get uh, the, the board members uh, individually to organize and support, but with, without, without doing so in, your, in, in the organization's uh, official name, right? So people know you're inf inferential, but the, you are not crossing the red line of uh, using your mailing list, for example, that's a very typical one. You know, don't ever send anything um, notice to support a political candidate using either your WeChat group that's officially branded as your organization's uh, contact list, not your email list, none of that, so that you don't get into trouble. But then people know that you have political influence. And also, um, perseverance throughout the years is very important because your internship program may go up and down because certain 
political um, officers they may make um, announce a retirement, which actually happens this year to us. The county supervisor, uh, Scott Hackley, um, announced his retirement. Then all of his staff, most of his staff quit. So that terminated uh, their internship program. So we have one less uh, placement. So anyway, that's uh, what I have to share so Thank far. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you. So Thank you so much there, Charles. Let's yes. give him a warm round of applause yes. here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jackie Wynn, and um, what I do for my day job is I work at the California uh, State Capitol. I am the press secretary as well as the director of the Asian Pacific American Outreach for the Senate Minority Leader, as well as for the Senate Republican Caucus. And um, I've been very fortunate because I also agree with Charles here in a few points that he brought up in regards to the fact that Apapa. Apapa is a well-known name, it's respected. And so it doesn't take much for us to go knocking on doors and say like, hey, we have an Apapa intern that we would like to place in your capital office or perhaps in your district office. However, you know, throughout the years, there are going to be hiccups with internship programs. And some of them is uh, perhaps setting up best practices and expectations for students. We had an incident last year where one student was falling asleep in one of the capital offices and had to speak to a uh, chief of staff. And while my uh, hat at the state capitol is I work for the Republican leader and that office for a Democrat, um, I had to take that, off, that hat off in regards to my work and think about a papa and what's best for a papa because CC Yin has worked hard to develop a relationship as well as be respectful around the capital. And so that's one of the things that we need to learn and uh, share best practices is about relationship building, regardless of your political spectrum. Because we are here, first and foremost, to share and learn and to promote our API future leaders, whether it's you in here in this room or the students who are in the room right down the hall from us. And so for me, the best practice is about relationship building regardless of political spectrum because at the end of the day, we're all here for one purpose. Um, the other thing is keeping in contact with the offices um, throughout the year. What I've done is I go knocking on doors and saying, hey, you know, we're gonna have our internship program starting up. I start doing this in January because people don't wanna think about internships in November or December. So I start doing it in January and start letting people know, and especially the offices that we've already had relationships with. And the other thing that you need to be mindful of, of is, Regardless if you talk to an elected official and they agree to have an intern, the person who's really behind the scenes accepting the intern is their staff. Their chief of staff, their legislative director, their office manager, whoever it is, because regardless, because we've had situations where somebody came up and talked to the elected official and they agreed at an event. And then when we reach out to their office, the office manager, the person who's in charge is saying, we didn't know anything about it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, your point of contact is with their staff. You have a good working relationship with their staff, it will help you in terms of opening the door year in and year out. Not just that one time, but you also have to remember elected officials, they are termed out. So the people who work at the state capitol or the people who work at the city offices or at the county offices, they're gonna be there. And so if you develop relationships, a very strong working relationship with them, you're gonna be able to, it's gonna help you in terms of opening the door for that office, as well as for other offices that you may have in mind in terms of placing your intern. So those are some of the best practices that I've learned throughout the two years in being part of the internship program uh, with APAPA. Prior to coming up here to Sacramento, I was down in San Diego, so I worked with Ron Cho down in San Diego, and I think we had somewhat of an internship program down there, but up here, being so close to the state capital, it's very thriving, and of course, we have Cece, who is a visionary and a driver for our internship program. So I hope these are some of the things that help you in regards to the best practices for internship. Um, relationship, uh, and basically the relationship is with the people in the office. You may have a wonderful relationship with the elected official, but you also have to remember that they are running in five different directions in regards to their staff. There's policy, there's fundraising, there's this, there's that, there's meetings, there's, they're setting things up just not for today, but for next week, for next month, and so they're constantly being run by their staff. And the person that you need to be in, uh, in contact with is the right person in their staff as well. And I hope this is helpful for everyone here. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Shan Yan of Papa Greater Sacramento also. Before I start, Dr. Dr. Michael, can you repeat the question? So, so that the audience will so remind the audience and myself. Yeah. What's the best practice in terms of developing relationships? Like uh, what Jackie had just mentioned. And I'll add another piece to it. What kind of internship placements are the best? Right? How do you structure the best? At first, you're just going to take anything you can get sometimes. Then you get picky. You develop a relationship. What is the best kind of internship placement that really opens doors for the interns? You really don't want interns to come in and, oh, staple all this stuff, right? You really want interns to come in and say, hey, I'm working on policy. You want to do some research for me? You want to go out and find out something for me? I want you to sit in at these important meetings, right? What are good internship opportunities that you've seen? Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Again, my name is Sean Yang. I'm with the PAPA uh, Regional Chair for Central Valley. I think everyone here has a story, and I do too. So my story begins in Thailand. I was born there, lived there for 12 years, and then we came to America. I didn't speak a word of English, but that journey of 12 years, I was growing up, with different, uh, different API groups. And I see a lot of different things. Once I'm here, I learned English in sixth grade. It was very difficult, but my upbringing here was quite different because there's a lot of challenges, such as racial, um, racial put downs, lack of opportunities, all kinds of stuff that most of you, are, if not all of you, have experienced. So the reason why I share this, I think that it's important to be aware of your surrounding. Because it's just not the fact that they judge you. You're gonna judge them as well. So it's not just about receiving hate and you giving out hate. It's about adapting to a new culture, new people. And I think that's very important. With that said, I'm very fortunate to get my engineering degree and also my MBA. I recently joined PAPA two years ago and fortunate was asked to uh, take uh, a seat as a regional chair. And I, I saw as an opportunity to give more to our team in the Central Valley and to the community as, as, a, as a whole. With that said, I think that understanding your story and understanding who you're looking for, story, it's very important. Because everybody is going to have different story. What that means is that not everybody is going to have four point two. Not everybody is going to be participating in the public sector. So I think that to be fair and to truly give opportunity to our youth to be our future leader, we have to understand those sort of things. So once we understand that, I think that our plat our, our spectrum of leaders is going to be so many and so dynamic. So, when I'm involved with this year's, as a co-chair, selecting the internships, uh, selecting the interns for the internship, we don't just look at GPAs. We look at your, the interns participations, their, um, their background, as far as ethnicities, and so forth. And I think that when we do that, we really cover uh, diversity for our API community. And I think that that's key because we're not focused on just one group of API. So I think that to, to take or to be able to get the best from the community, you have to be open, 
You have to understand their stories, but you also have to have um, steps that allows you to connect with them as far as maybe have them write essays to describe who they are, and then also have interviews, phones, phone interviews, so that you can connect with them. So just because they write a great essay, that doesn't reflect on who they really are, right? And I think that those sort of things, it's very important because you give yourself to know about the person when you read the essay, but also get the chance to connect with the person and understand the person's, person's maturity and readiness. Because what Michael Chang was alluded to, we want 18 and over. The reason being, I think, is because we want someone who's mature enough to be trained and then take on uh, the journey as soon as possible. So with that said, I myself had gone on the radio talk show. I have gone to banquets, celebrations throughout the Central Valley to recruit people. However, sometimes because the community, they don't know about your organization, they don't know about their program or their uh, internship program, they are really hesitant to participate. So for me to do it uh, better, next time, I think that I would definitely have to connect with the local leaders in that community, and then when I go talk, I bring them with me. That gives credibility. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, last but not least is HP. HP Wang is from Apapa, Albany, and he has something to share with us too. Yes. So you from California? And, uh, I'm from California, yes. yes. How are you? California. Also to California. me, uh, California is a different country. <laughs> I'm from upstate New York, not New York, upstate New York. We have almost zero representation in the political spectrum of the Asian community. We are 30 years behind California. So it's totally different, different world. When I uh, started uh, a chapter in upstate New York, I uh, had knocked the door. You know, I went to the assembly member's office and the uh, county, city, mayor's office. When I introduced myself, Albany chapter, they look at you like a, not a single elect officials recognize a papa on had heard of papa. So it's a totally different world. And we have 213 elected uh, legislators in uh, New York. We have one for a long time, one out of 213. So it's a different uh, situation. And most people think that New York is a blue state as a down upstate is not quite correct. So uh, it's a different situation. So we have to have a different strategy. We, uh, we went through a lot of hardship to convince people. Fortunately, we have a one page of uh, introduction of the internship program. I forgot it's from headquarters in Sacramento or from, uh, from the former program leader. That's pretty handy. So you, when you introduce yourself, same time, he explained the industry program. Uh, but this year, we had 13 openings from town supervisor, city mayor, Albany City, Schenectady City. Albany is like uh, Sacramento. And uh, we have uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor's office, Governor's office. And we have two from U.S. Senator Judy Brand's office. So you can see that from zero to 13, you have to do something right. Actually, more than 13, I went to a, a congressman's uh, campaign uh, fundraiser uh, three days ago. They wanted us. Now, once I opened, uh, we have an industry position, they, they want <laughs> immediately want it. So 
So you have to work on it. How do we do that? It's really the basically social political capital of an individual or of an organization. You have to develop that. And uh, the first thing is we have a diverse team. The industry program, we have uh, two Chinese, two Pakistani, and two Indian, six of them, to run the industry program. Uh, so you have to have a diverse, you, you broaden your base. And the second thing we do, we always leverage the civic leadership forum. I don't know if you run that, and the politicians love it. You give them a platform to talk about their policy in front of the constituents, it's, it's wonderful. So whenever you organize that, all the politicians recognize the, the name brand, Apapa, so they, they listen, their staff will listen. Uh, the, the other thing is the political contribution. You know, you, you vote, you pay. That's the American system. Uh, you have to go to the campaign office when they have a fundraiser. You have to not only bring the check, you have to bring the check in person and, they, and give them your contact and talk to the staff. So those kind of things, it's a bit, uh, you know, you have to practice. Whether it's the $100 or $1,000, you have to leverage that. And uh, the other thing we have to do is uh, also help them uh, doing the campaign thing. I know a Papa is non political, non profit, but if, when you do this kind of thing, you have to say that I'm not on behalf of any organization as an individual. So you have to do that. Okay. And the other thing is uh, the internship training. You can make sure the intern do a good job. So the office, the elected official office, will open next year. One Indian screw up and then you don't have a chance. So the so training is very important and uh, that's all I have. And I have a, a three, four minutes of video given by Dr. Aliya uh, Saeed. Uh, she's an uh, activist. She's a leader of a women's march. I don't know if you, she gives speech in front of 7,000 people every year. So. And she is our industry program uh, leader. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Hello, Papa. Hello, Civic Leadership <coughs> USA. Thank you for your support and the amazing programs that um, we, we have throughout the country. Uh, so I am Adia Saeed. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit, a uh, little bit about uh, what we do in Albany, in New York. We are a small branch, uh, and we place interns here uh, every year. Um, um, considering the, um, the size of our branch, we have actually a rather robust internship program. This year we had approximately 13 slots. Uh, we ended up using only eight because that's how much we were um, um, able to fund. But uh, you know we have a ton of slots that uh, we um, are able to fill with uh, suitable interns. So we usually start a process somewhere in the uh, fall of the preceding year. Um, uh, we have a team of uh, about six volunteers from different communities. Uh, what it does, having the volunteers from different communities uh, on the internship team, is that we have a diverse group of interns who ends up applying to our program. Um, once we have received the application, which um, are done online, uh, thanks to uh, a volunteer within our team who has IT expertise. Uh, we gather together as a, um, as a group and screen our interns um, and, and establish a short list. Um, and then one of our uh, a volunteer, uh, Dr. Kuo, who's actually attending the meeting, she ends up interviewing all of our interns, um, helping prep them for the, uh, for the application process, helping them with uh, the personal uh, statements. Um, she also helps them uh, with you know, cleaning up their social media, all the things that a potential uh, employer will look at. Once uh, our interns are ready, we are able to match them with uh, um, our various host institutions. Uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, this year we had about 13 plus uh, slots available to us. We ended up uh, placing eight interns because that's how many uh, we could fund. 
Um, however, we have never had a dearth of slots available to us. Um, and I think that comes from having years of relationships with um, area elected officials. Um, so I've been asked this question, how are we able to get so many slots? And I think a lot of it is about developing your social capital outside of the internship season. Um, if you look outside, uh, does your lawn have a lawn sign for candidates for your local school boards, for your council members, for your legislators? Uh, if you don't have a lawn sign for a candidate, that means you're not politically engaged enough. Um, do you volunteer outside of your API community? Um, so if you were to leave your community today, will everybody look around to say, oh, uh, where is so-and-so? Uh, he or she used to help us do something that cannot be done anymore because they used to take care of it all the time. So if you are that engaged with the community where the community will miss you when you leave, um, then you should have no problem finding slots for your interns because now you have all these other people who you have helped out over the years and they're eager to help you with what is important to you. Um, and I would say most importantly, uh, you should um, love what you do uh, because if you're not enthusiastic about your program, um, it's going to be very hard for you to make other people want to help you. Um, enthusiasm can be pretty infectious. So if I love doing what I'm doing, um, people can tell and they want to help me out. Um, but I would say perhaps the most important lesson um, that we have learned is that we should um, find good quality interns for the next year. Um, the employer from last year would want actually more interns. So. Um, in the mayor's office, uh, in our particular case, we had put in one intern last year. Uh, this year we have two, and they actually wanted more, but two is all we could give them. Uh, so that's an example of how having excellent interns really um, makes for a very easy placement in subsequent years. Um, so I think that's pretty much, um, I would say, the most important thing to keep in mind. And uh, um, other than that, I think there is really no great magic to what happens um, in terms of placement. Good luck with everything. Thank you so much. Can we give uh, her and Paul a round of applause for just sharing with us? Uh, can somebody in the back turn on the mic? That's <laughs> Thank you. So, so we have about 15 minutes. Let's open this, right? Other people, uh, what has worked for you, right? Let's drill down into when you're creating relationships, right? When you're creating relationships, what has really worked for you? Or what are good intentions, right? What worked for you? And something to share, all right? Go ahead. Michael, I'm really sorry. I was remiss earlier. I did mention that part of a successful internship program is the timing of when Can everybody? Okay. Um, timing of when you place the students. For instance, at the California State Legislature, we have legislative recess starting on July 12th through August 12th. You don't want to have student interns if you can prevent it uh, being placed during that time because they may be placed and they may be sitting in the office doing nothing at that time. So you want to be cognizant of that because. You want to have get the students to have their best practice and also get a good experience with the internship. So you don't want them to be sitting there idle and not doing much. So one of the things you need to know about is the time frame of when things are ramping up. For instance, if you're placing students at the Capitol or you're placing students in county offices or city offices. So what one of the things that I've done for our uh, Sacramento internship program is that I've reached out to Sacramento County and placed a couple students in the county supervisor offices because they're constantly working throughout the entire year. They don't have legislative recess. So I wanted to share that with you because we encountered a situation last year where we had 16 students and unfortunately we only had like 14 offices to place the students because the other offices were already filled 
with their own interns that they have. And so I reached out to our Sacramento County Board of Supervisors and asked them if they were willing to take a student. So that has helped too. So I wanted to share with you, a lot of times when we think about placing students, we think of them placing them at the state capitol because they're gonna get like this wonderful experience. However, you always have to remember there are city and county uh, public officials who are running the city and county as well. Don't dismiss them because as somebody here in this room, we all know politics is very local. So when they're on the local side, they can also get a great experience and hands-on experience more than perhaps from the state side because on the state side, you have to deal with the chief of staff, you have to deal with the legislative director, you have to deal with the office manager, the communications director. You have layer and layer of bureaucracy. And so on this uh, local and city level, you may have a smaller staff, and so the, the student may have a better internship uh, opportunity because they're getting more hands-on experience. So I wanted to share that, and I did share that earlier. Thank you so much. So timing really matters, right? Timing matters, understanding them matters. Building a relationship is supposed to be a very Asian thing, right? So we're good at this, right? It's unnatural, right? But it turns out that Americans here are also into relationship building. I mean, doing it the right way, doing it the proper way, doing it in a mature way. Uh, I actually have a suggestion. You know, uh, as you heard from the panelists, we should not be a pester to them, right? We're helping them out because that's what they want to do. So when we send good interns, right, we are actually doing them a favor. And the ones that are smart, they see that completely. So it helps our community. They help themselves, right? And then so we have to really understand their workflow. Right? We know when they're busy, when they're not busy. We know that we need to talk to staff. Right? The decision maker is the politician. Right? The politician, you develop a relationship with them. Sometimes outside your nonprofit. Your nonprofit asks for things. You yourself give things. Right? You give volunteer time on your own. Right? If you have a few dollars, you give some money. Regardless of more or less, you give somebody. You get other people to give on a personal. And then you get something for your organization. Right? And they say, oh, let's do the go ahead and play some interns. Then you work with their staff. They're the key people. They know so much. Right? You completely understand what they're doing. You know where are the possibilities. Right? You, if you have time, you might get to know their office. Even if you say that this is going to earn you a lot of points, if you say, that, hey, I want to shadow your office just for a day. I want to come in and really understand how you work, like what kind of pressures you're under, what do you do, right? Can I shadow the elected for a day? Can I shadow your office just to watch you? People love it because public work usually is nobody appreciates it. Nobody appreciates it when the light's working. You see what I'm saying? When you say going, hey, I really appreciate your work. It's not easy. I want to kind of watch it. And it'll give you lots of ideas. Right? Then you really know how to make it work when you ask for something. Right? You ask for something that's really that they can give you, that they want to give you. And when you send them good interns that actually help them out, right? That they don't have to babysit and whatever, they'll ask for you. Can you send me more people? Other people, what do you have to share? Yes, please. I know somebody else is raising. Oh, I have, I have a question. Though. I'll make it Go quick. My, um, yeah. um, my experience with uh, local, not the state level, city and county, uh, we have so many community events for Asians in ABN. And uh, we grew, I'm an um, organizer for Boston Chapter, and uh, we connect the local staff we invite them to our events, Indian that event, Indian this event, or Asian that event, Asian this event. When the staff comes, we groom the people who are going to be the interns for next year. We put that person next to them, and they take to the coffee, they take to the lunch, relationship building. It starts there. So I just want to make that point clear. Very good. Excellent. Treat the staff nice. They, a lot of times don't even make that much money. 
if they were for Congress. So their reason for doing it is kind of like your reason. They want to serve, right? And so they love to see this done. So treat them nice, goes a long way. Electeds, a lot of times there are rules what they could take, right? But if they're staff, there are still rules, but you should find out what are the rules and just be very appreciative. And whenever you can, right, be nice to them. Uh, hi, uh, this is Hong Chiu from Ohio. So uh, just uh, really love the session. So many good ideas, so many good pointers. So um, we saw, you know, kind of uh, going over the key points. I have a question. I think I, I have that burning desire to understand, you know, uh, this question is uh, specifically directed to uh, HP. You know, you mentioned about the political contribution, the campaign, and et cetera. Uh, we, I'm very new to this, so I want to learn how you do it and how you become part of it. How do you separate your, your eat yourself from the organization to not utilize the organization's social and political capital while promoting the organization? Uh, give a short answer, and that's a very important question, right? We're, we're all working on that. Yes, it's very important. You have to uh, separate the nonprofit versus uh, the political action. And whenever you introduce yourself, like uh, when I gave the business card to the chief staff, I have a Papa uh, uh, business card. But I would say that uh, I support this campaign on behalf of myself, not on behalf of the organization. You have to say that every time. Uh, when you organize fundraiser, we did that several times for congressmen and also the assembly member. At the beginning, at the end, you have to say that. So it's a very, make very clear. Some people will take pictures, some people will make a video. So you have to be extremely careful. So everyone needs to uh, take a training session. You know, do's and don'ts about nonprofit organization. Our agenda is pretty full this time around. Maybe next year, that would be a good topic, yeah, right? Be a great okay, topic. we'll go deep into it. Right? How do you present your nonprofit side and your nonprofit? And just as HP says, sometimes it's simple as today I'm talking with you. I have multiple hats. You all have multiple hats, right? You have jobs. You have your nonprofit. You come out and say, Hey, today I'm uh, I'm wearing this hat, and people go, Okay, I get it, right? And you don't send mixed messages. You're wearing your own hat, so don't wear your a papa shirt. Does that make sense to you, right? Just being smart about things like that, so that people, there's no misunderstanding. So you have to repeat that every time. Today, I'm here, I'm representing a papa, and we're going to talk about this business. And then the person, people go, oh, can you support my, 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 my fundraiser and things like that? And you say, oh, that's another discussion. Maybe we'll schedule another time, talk to you a different way or whatever. The, 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 the public officials, they have lots of rules. If they're in Congress, they cannot use their congressional office for campaigning. Does that make sense? So when Norman Mineta was in San Jose, he has his congressional office here. And then on the hallway, there's a room. I call it, it's actually more like a closet. <laughs> that's when he does his private things, right? If you want to talk about campaigns, right, that's the room they go into. And that's the best practice, right? So we always see what's the best practice, right? We learn from each other. Yes. Can I ask that? Yeah, please, of course. I want to add to that because uh, when 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 I was running as a campaign manager for Mayor Lee campaign uh, a year ago, I, I was still joining a Papa, and it was a uh, kind of awkward feeling at times. But how I did it was. Um, I, at time, I post on social media such as Facebook, but I, I was very careful in terms of, you know, transparency, um, not related. So that was one of the things that I make sure that it has no conflicts. The the other thing is that when I'm with a Papa, I never talk about my campaign, never. Now I might have you know outside of the meeting personal conversation, one-on-one, -on -one, I might mention something if they ask me. So I think that you have to understand um, a kind of like a clear cut of what not to do. 
and uh, I didn't hear any uh, anything in terms of um, comment about you know sorry comment about what something that I might have I should not have done. So I just want to share that you have to understand there's a clear cut to it. I just want to share that. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, we have a few more minutes. I want to ask who has a good story or something to share about a particularly good internship placement? That, oh, that placement was very good. And in that office, they had the interns do this rather than that. And I thought that was so helpful, right? That was so good. So please go ahead. Yeah, I have one. Um, it's not uh, to the big official. We have one placement in uh, one of the Chicago big city uh, called Aurora. So the city, particularly as an internship, uh, has a background of uh, city planning. Why? Because the city planning director wants an intern. So he wants an intern of an uh, Asian view, you know, how the intern can help him go to the market and take pictures, how the, you know, everything related to the city planning, the building rule and, uh, and the suggestions for the hotels and arrangement. So that boy actually is, uh, you know, uh, one of our UC Illinois, uh, you know, interns. So he is right to have that position. He's telling mom every day how much he enjoy because he see he contribute you know to what the city planning and even have a summary he said I you know I suggest the city you know move the you know um, the, the kind of a business together in an area and also build a hotel he says oh, well, I need a one more hotel and he's thinking mom if 10 years later or even five years later if the city decided to build a hotel I think I contributed and that boy is you know thriving that position so I think you know yeah I know I know there's a, many of you mentioned you know it's a shadow or in the you know officials office but I think sometimes in the departments it's really interesting jobs too great thank you so much so don't ignore the uh, civil service the departments department of planning Parks and Recreation, all those are also very good. Yes, please. Hi, uh, I have a similar kind of uh, uh, experience. So we send interns to Ohio State House, and those are the shiny, you know, they go to uh, the, uh, representative's office or senator's office when you write. It just looks awesomely great. But actually, most of them, they don't have a, a huge amount of work to do. So this year, one of our interns, uh, because of our, our relationship, got to send to the county engineer's office. And that was turned out to be such an awesome position because uh, he, this, uh, our intern, got to stay with the engineer most of the time. And it's like an executive intern. He works with all the four department heads. And every time when they have some proposal or something, they want to show him. They'll bring it you know, over and then explain the, um, the project. And it was just so awesome. And then he also got to present some of the proposal to the commissioner. And the engineer posts the experience on Facebook. And we were just so thrilled. So many, many times, I certainly very much agree with what you are saying. You know, Really don't overlook any of this county or city level positions. Those are really uh, very good opportunities. Great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, anybody else have a particularly good intern placement story? You placed somebody and it was so good. Oh. Okay. <laughs> What's your question? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, how do we know which department or officer they offer the internship program? Yeah. So typically when it's... Whoa, sorry. I think I have to do more. Can you call yeah. them? Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. talk. Okay, uh, so typically the city ones or the government ones, they're more specialized. And they're also looking for interns with specialized skills. So you've got to have a vision. Whoa. So anyway, um, you, at the beginning, I get it, you know, you're just taking any internship opportunities you want. After a while, you go, we train really good interns. Now we're picky now. <laughs> We're going to see what you can offer, right? So the city departments, they're good at specialties. Planning, they don't want to just take anybody. If you have a student that also has a great interest doing a major in college, urban planning, they love to have that person. Does that make sense? Right? 
So certain things, and they're looking for those opportunities too, right? So you're the magnet. You're gonna go, oh, I, I got one for planning. I got one for you know, I don't know, uh, communications or uh, you know, whichever department. They're much more specialized. Right? That's where you learn the ropes about being specialized. Some uh, office, they just do great intern programs. They take a lot of pride, right? You know, the interns come in, we take them to places, we expose them, we do them, we give them various assignments, we do a lot of good stuff. You want to always leverage those. Some offices, they're open to, to, to input from an ethnic point of view. They get it. They're in California, right? They really want to serve the community. And if you talk to their staff, and that's why you need to know what they do, right? You have to get more interested. Like what's, what are the big issues? Oh, we're doing city planning. We're going to do a lot of development. Well, what does your community think about that? Right? What do you think? They, you know, you, you have something to offer, not just general stuff, but also from the community. Then you get a sense like, whoa, you know, I know what to get out of this. I know what we're going to get out of that. Some, they offer some, 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 some electors, they're willing to take people to do things, and you want to send to that office because it's a quality office. Not all, every office is a quality office, right? A quality office will give them, learn the environment. That's what it takes. That's what it really is. That's what really serving the people means. That's how they deal with typical hard questions. What do they offer, right? If you want to become a politician, you think you're cut for it, go look at how this person performs. This person is really great in your eyes. So you have to do your research, and then you get picky. And then you, you choose them as much as they choose you down the road, right? Because they're coming to you and say, hey, and then you go, I, I, don't, I don't even have that many people, right? All that. That's what makes it exciting, right? It makes it exciting. And then, and then you're going to see some of your interns that go, it's not everybody. A lot of interns, truly, they're still exploring. Some will find out this is not for them. And that's completely good. But some will find out, yeah, I do work, want to work with them. Yes, I do want to work for office. Yes, I do want to be like you, right? Being on the community side as a volunteer forever. So those are, those are those will be great. Okay? We're gonna stop here because we're at lunchtime. But the